The universe has long captivated us with its immense scales of distance and time. How far out does it stretch? Where does it end? And what lies beyond the star fields and the streams of the galaxy that extend as far as the telescopes can see? These questions are beginning to yield to a series of extraordinary new lines of investigation and to technologies that are letting us peer not only into the most distant realms of the cosmos but at the behavior of matter and energy on the smallest of scales. Remarkably, our growing understanding of this kingdom of the ultra-tiny inside the nuclei of atoms is now enabling us to glimpse the answer to the ancient question. That is, how large is the universe? In ancient times, most observers saw the stars as a sphere surrounding the earth and as the home of deities. The Greek were the first to see the celestial events as phenomena, subject to the human investigations, rather than the fickle whims of the gods. One philosopher and a sky watcher named Anosaurus suggested that the meteors are made up of material found on earth and therefore might have even came from the earth. Those early astronomers built the foundations of modern science. But they would be shocked to see the discoveries made by their counterparts today. The stars and planet that once harbored the gods are now seen as the infinitesimal parts of a vast scaffolding of matter and energy that extends far out into space. The question of the how far started to begin emerge in 1920s. Working at the huge new 100-inch Hooker telescope on California's Mount Wilson. Astronomer Edwin Hubble, along with an assistant named Milt Humason, analyzed the light of fuzzy patches of sky, known then as nebula. They showed that these were actually distant galaxies located far beyond our own. Hubble and Humason discovered that most of them are moving away from us. The farther out they look, the faster these objects are receding. This fact, now known as a Hubble's law, suggests that there must have been a time when the matter in all the galaxies were together in one place. Everything that the astronomers saw in their increasingly large telescopes would have dated back to a singular beginning, now called the Big Bang. That the universe could expand had been predicted back in 1971 by Albert Einstein, except that the Einstein himself didn't believe it until he saw the Hubble and the Humason evidence. Einstein's general theory of relativity suggested that galaxies could be moving apart because space itself is expanding. So when a photon gets blasted out from a distant star, it moves through a cosmic landscape that is getting larger and larger, increasing the distance it must have traveled to reach us. So how large the cosmos has gotten since the Big Bang depends on how long it has been growing. In addition, Alan Gutt proposed that the energy fields embedded in vacuum of space had suddenly tipped into a higher energy state, causing a space and time to literally inflate. The universe went from atomic size to the cosmological size within an infinitely short time. As a result, according to the Gutt's calculation, the universe as a whole would have grown 
to some 10 billion trillion times the size of the observable universe. That's a 10 followed by the 24 zeros. Put another way, the whole universe is to the observable universe as the observable universe to an atom. The incredible fury of cosmic inflation helps explain the immense size and smoothness of the universe. But to succeed, the theory must also account for how the universe produced what we see around us. All those stars and galaxies and the cluster of galaxies and ultimately us. Scientists are now attempting to piece together the chain of events that launched our universe in the earliest moments by generating what you might call a little bang. At the Brookhaven National Lab in New York State, they are blasting gold atoms in opposite directions down tunnels almost two and a half miles long. When these atoms reach velocities just short of the speed of light, they are sent into a violent collision. A fireball erupts, reaching a temperature exceeding 2 trillion degrees centigrade. As far as we know, the last time anything in our universe was that hot was about a millionth of a second after its birth. What interests the scientists is the splatter of subatomic particles a super hot soup of quarks and the gluons that theory says gave rise to matter as we know it. In initial tests, the quark gluon plasma has shown a crucial property, extremely low viscosity or resistance to flow. Scientists call it as a perfect liquid. To grasp its importance, we go back to those primordial energy fields that the theory says spawned the Big Bang. The theory is that those fields contained tiny fluctuations that were blown up to a huge size during inflation. In the ultra-dense quark-gluon mix, these fluctuations generated pressure waves or ripples. As the universe evolved, these ripples gave rise to the variations in the density of matter. Amazingly, the imprint of those primordial ripples is out there today, in a faint signal discovered accidentally back in 1960s. Working for the Bell Telephone Company, physicist Arno Penzias and the Robert Wilson had built a giant horn-shaped antenna. But wherever they pointed, the contraption picked up excessive noise in the microwave portion of the electromagnetic spectrum. That noise turned out to a match a prediction made years earlier, that in the wake of a Big Bang, the universe was filled with a cloud of extremely hot gases that scattered all light. As the universe cooled, the cloud dissipated. Light then shone through. Over time, the spectral signature of this light would have shifted as the universe expanded and cooled to what the Penzias and the Wilson detected. What they would heard was the echo of the Big Bang. The image shows the smooth contours of the light recorded by the Bell team. Scientists would have looked closer to find the imprint of cosmic inflation. The Space Shuttle Discovery lifted the Hubble Space Telescope into orbit on 24th April 1990, in one of the most important scientific milestones of our time. Another launch took place five months earlier, the Cosmic Observation background explorer, in short, COPE, was sent up to take a harder look at the microwave radiation discovered by Penzias and Wilson. 
The results came out two and a half years later. The light of the early universe contained a pattern of hot and cold spots. In this image was nothing less than the origin of all we see around us today. Smooth on a large scale but with significant clumps from which gravity would form gas clouds, then stars and galaxies. The Solan Digital Sky Survey set the standard for mass production astronomy. A series of steel plates are drilled with holes that exactly match the location of galaxies in the night sky. After plugging fiber optic sensors into the holes, the plates capture the light of hundreds of galaxies per night. From that light, the astronomers calculate their distance from Earth. Another survey is named the 2 Micron All Sky Survey or 2 Mass. After the frequency of infrared light, its detectors are tuned to capture. In this image, the 2 Mass data covers a region 60 million light years across. The local groups of galaxies including the Milky Way are in the center. This is our intergalactic neighborhood. Jump further out of a region about 200 million light years across, our location is linked to a densely packed Virgo supercluster, the nearest intergalactic city. Stepping out to a region over 320 million light years across, you can see the full breadth of our local regions of the universe. Galaxies line up in walls and arcs. Beyond them are sparsely populated voids. The rural cosmic countryside. Moving out with the data, this region is over 650 million light years across then almost 2 billion, 3.2 billion and finally out to a region 6.5 billion light years from end to end, the cosmic continent. In the middle of it all, our galaxy, so immense from our earthly perspective, is less than a speck. The two mass study the Sloan Digital Sky Survey and the two degree field in Australia have extended our maps to a quarter of the way back to the beginning of the universe. They have laid out a grand cosmic roadmap. COPE's successor, the Wilkinson Microwave Anastrophy Probe or WMAP was launched to scan the early universe for the fine scale origins of this cosmic atlas. WMAP traveled beyond any interference from Earth to a position balanced between the Earth and the Sun. There for two years, its detectors took in the pristine light of deep space. This is what the WMAP saw, a pattern consistent with the filaments and voids that had evolved in the universe at large. Scientists are poring over the WMAP data for clues to the true dimensions of the universe. One group, for example, looked for repeating pattern that could be evidence of the pressure waves that they recorded through the hot gas of early times. They saw none, which implies that the universe had grown so large during inflation that such waves could not cross it. Then did the math and reported that the entire universe must have a minimum diameter of 78 billion light years. So what is its maximum size and what's beyond that? We will never know for sure what lies beyond our visual horizons, but the astronomers are turning up some uprising hints in the universe they can see. To ancient observers, the universe was made up of five classical elements earth, water, air, fire, 
and the fifth is space. Aristotle believed the stars, unchanging and incorruptible, were made of this fifth element. Today, we are finding that space, in fact, has a character of its own. Astronomers have calculated the gravitational pull needed to bind stars as they orbit a galaxy or galaxies as they orbit a cluster of galaxies. They have found that there is simply nowhere near enough visible matter to hold these structures together. The missing ingredient, its identity still unknown, they call dark matter. In supercomputer simulations of cosmic evolution, dark matter is added in to supply the gravitational tug needed to form the web pattern of filaments and walls, voids and dense clusters we see in the universe at large. But something else appears to be happening on these large scales. Astronomers have been making refined measurements of the cosmic expansion rate with a new type of distance maker. They wanted to know if gravity was slowing down the pace at which the universe is growing. The markers they used, type 1a supernova, are thought to burn at uniform intensities throughout the universe. By measuring changes in the brightness of these so-called standard candles at various distances, the researchers can spot changes in the cosmic expansion rate. To their surprise, the data showed that the universe as a whole is not only expanding, it's actually accelerating outward. The culprit is thought to be energy welling up from the vacuum of space, similar to what occurred in the early moments of the Big Bang causing cosmic inflation. By emerging in minute quantities everywhere, it is pushing space outward across the whole universe. Over time, this so-called dark energy has grown to an astonishing three-fourths of the all the matter and energy in the universe. With data like this pointing to an underlying dynamic within our universe, some scientists are thinking of the cosmos as far broader terms than ever before. There is a version of inflationary theory, for example, that suggests we live in one of many universes that may coexist side by side but do not touch one another. Like bubbles, they are continually rising up and expanding across the oceans of infinity. Just 500 years ago, in Galileo's time, many people looked out into space and saw a universe of light centered on the Earth. The invention of the telescope revealed stars far from our planet, then galaxies, clusters of galaxies and beyond them vast walls and filaments of matter. New ideas about the size of the universe amount to a quantum leap in our sense of scale by extending these structures far, far beyond our horizons. Do these discoveries push us on our tiny out-of-the-way planet into a smaller and smaller corner of creation? Or does our ability to comprehend and imagine the far limit of time and space somehow expand our importance in the grand scheme of things.